customers without power today. We're following breaking news right now. North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper is in Canton, North Carolina with the latest on restoration efforts there. Let's listen in live. Not expecting the magnitude of the storm that actually hit. Uh, water raging in rivers all over western North Carolina in an unprecedented way. We know that this unprecedented catastrophic storm requires an unprecedented response. And we're in the middle of that right now. That is involving federal, state, local, nonprofit, communities of faith, coordinating to help people. I have a list of things that uh, we're providing to Haywood County. I won't, I won't go down at all, but it goes from, from water to medical cots to swift water rescue teams to law enforcement officers to medical and nurses and incident management teams, uh, canine search teams, EB, EPA hazmat specialists, high water clearance vehicles, cellular on wheels, ambulance strike team, the list goes on and on. It's amazing what you take for granted when you no longer have it and really didn't even know that it was there. And now we're having to work to make sure it gets back up to speed again. Know that we're all committed 24 seven around the clock to make sure that Western North Carolina recovers. We do have 92 search and rescue teams. There are still people that we are trying to find and get to. The good thing is that a lot of people have now begun getting communication and are letting their loved ones know they are okay, but there are still others in individual counties that they are going after and we have teams helping them. I'm glad to be here with FEMA Administrator Deanne Criswell. Her and her team have been with us since day one. Uh, how many now? It was over 50,000 who've applied for FEMA assistance yes, yesterday evening. It's definitely much more than that. Much more than that. But, but people can uh, go to disasterassistance.gov or download the, the FEMA app and can register for help. More than $6 million has already been paid to people. We're grateful to have her here. We also have our Secretary of Department of Public Safety, Eddie Buffalo, working with our emergency management team to coordinate with the counties. We have our Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services, uh, Cody Kinsley. Uh, all 22 of the hospitals in Western North Carolina are back on the power grid, but we're working with them to manage their significant challenges that they have, bringing in medical assistance for them. Uh, we're also working with water systems across the, the, the area because we know there are significant issues there. We also have with us Representative Mark Pless, who, who is here, and we have uh, the mayor of Canton, who's, uh, I, I've been grateful for his strong leadership here over the years with all of the challenges this town has, has faced. And I'm going to stand close to him because they got all these mics on me. But I want him to give you guys just a little background of this town and, and good things that have been done here. So, Mayor, well, I'll call on you. We're still here, uh, first off. And that's important not just for our citizens of Haywood County to hear, but our friends and neighbor, neighbors across Western North Carolina. The lessons we learned from Tropical Storm Fred didn't make a difference this time. I was talking with the governor, our business community, our leaders, uh, days before this storm in prepping. I, I feel the town, Haywood County, we were the best prepared to do with this. There's only so much you can do when 28 feet of water comes to your hometown. Um, and again, we would not have learned those lessons without the help of Governor Cooper, his team, uh, the General Assembly. Uh, Mark Pless has been a tremendous advocate for us as is Senator Corbin. Um, and we can use those lessons. Because of that, we have businesses that have the possibility of reopening because they're able to move their in inventory. Instead of hours, we had days and we took advantage of that. De de debris removal made a difference to this whole community because when you suffer these floods, if there's debris in it, the massive amount of basically projectiles and the damming of this. This stadium's in better condition because of debris removal and it gives us a chance and a different mindset. However, the mindset has to realize we were told this was once in a lifetime storm in 21. Here we are three years later. So we have to understand, as I've said, it seems West North Carolina sadly is in Hurricane Adley, uh, Alley. It's also very important for us to know we are very, very proud of our school system. We're here, but not just simply because it's a football stadium. This is a gathering place for our public schools and also honors our war dead. This is Pisgah Memorial Stadium. 
our public schools are very close to us in Haywood County. They're, the si they're ranked number six in North Carolina, and we're very proud about that. We have to get, and working with Representative Pless, we need specific money to our school system. It is such a moment. I was walking with Associate Superintendent Barker. We have, we have located all kids and teachers. As of right now. As of right now, that is so important to us, and I want to thank the school system, especially our teachers and staff on that. You know, at the same time, we are eager to start helping our neighbors. I've talked with Governor Cooper on this. We've learned from lessons. I can't be, you know, Haywood County, we've got power back in the city limits, mostly power back on, water back on. We're recovering. We are so eager to get out there the rest, the rest of West North Carolina and help because this has to be a recovery. Governor Cooper knows this. The secretaries know this. And y'all know this. It doesn't matter where you live in West North Carolina, what your hometown is, what holler, and I did use the word holler, and the national media has loved that word. Um, it doesn't matter. If you are affected by this storm, you deserve an equal response. You deserve respect. And that is very important to the governor. It's very important to his staff. And the other thing I want to address, there's a lot of misinformation out there. A lot of it's tied to the lack of com communication we had. Like I said, there were state resources and FEMA on the ground very early on, even pre-storm. And that is something that has gotten out there, and that's just misinformation. And right now, any, any moment we spend talking about things that aren't true takes us away from getting resources to the people that need it. But I could not be uh, prouder of our governor, the relationship we've shared, the bipartisan spirit. Once again, we will counter this with. Uh, we were prepared, and there's lessons we can learn. When the dust settles on this many, many months from now, we want to share that because we know another storm will hit West North Carolina. We need to take our lessons learned, build on them. But again, this is one mountain family, and there's something special about mountain folk. We know what it is to have the odds stacked against us, but there's some spirit about us that we just, we endure, and we keep going. Uh, these are tough times, but mountain people are tough. Thank you, Mayor. I know the coach wants to get Pisca Bears back to practice again, yeah, we so we've got to find a way for that, that to happen. We'll take your, your question. Let's go to Corey first. Uh, Governor, question for you as well as uh, Secretary or Administrator Criswell. We are seeing resources flow in, the needs of citizens are being met, but unfortunately we are seeing unparalleled misinformation coming out. Talk just a little bit about how that impedes y'all's efforts to serve the people who have been affected here. Well, the misinformation is damaging because uh, it can hurt our relief efforts. Uh, we want people to know that volunteers have indeed played a large role in what's happening in Western North Carolina. And the good thing is, is that that volunteer effort has been coordinated and is something that we anticipate before every disaster and we're grateful. Uh, we wish people would instead post about how people can help, where they can donate, what they can do. Uh, there's a lot of hard work. It also demoralizes uh, National Guard soldiers who are out here for days and days and, and people who are working in emergency management who are working around the clock to help people. Uh, when people talk up on social media about uh, that nothing is being done, that's just not true and it's frustrating to them. It doesn't bother me. I'm used to that kind of criticism. I'm concerned about them and we all need to pull together here. I, I guarantee you this. It makes no difference who you are or where you live. If you need help, we're going to work around the clock to try to get you that help. And one of the good things, I've, I've, this is my seventh or eighth county. I plan to, to hit everywhere in western North Carolina. And one of the things I've been able to do is get people to tell me things that are happening that are good and tell me things they are that they need. And not only do we try to address those individual needs, but we also are hearing that, hey, this is some area where we need to do even more. And there's so many things that people need that we want to make sure that we provide for them. And Administrator, I don't know if you want to add anything to I that. Think, Governor, I'll just add two very specific things for us. Um, one, there's a lot of misinformation about the fact that we, we are not going to have enough money because it's being redirected elsewhere. Just plain false. Uh, we have everything you need, Governor, everybody here in North Carolina, and we are going to be able to continue to provide that assistance as long as you need it. And the second part I want to say is it 
we have resources for individuals. We want them to apply for assistance. This level of misinformation creates the scenario where they won't even come to us. They won't even register. And I need people to register so they can get yeah. what they're eligible for through our programs. And so I really need your help in letting people know that the resources are here. They'll continue to come. And they need to apply to FEMA so they can get additional financial assistance, the individuals, for the things that they need most. Spectrum. Hi, Governor Cooper. Um, this community, Haywood County, Canton, has seen so much from Fred to the pandemic to the mill closure. I just want to know what you want to say to people in Haywood County, specifically Canton, um, as they're sort of going through yet another rough time. So I'm always inspired by people in Canton and Haywood County when we come and talk about disasters because they always build the rest of us up. <laughs> Their optimism their enthusiasm, their dedication has been amazing. I was telling a story, one of the things that we do to deal with disasters is that we have agreements with other states where they come in in a coordinated way and help us. So we have people from all over the United States who are helping us and we send our teams to other states when they need us. But I talked to one who said, I've done nine disasters. The North Carolina people are the nicest people I've ever met. Uh, one person who had had flooding in her home offered to do the laundry for the people who were there from another state. That's, there are many more examples like that, but I am grateful for their can-do spirit and know that we want this place to come back too. We also know that we're going to have to come back in a different way. We're going to have to be more resilient. We're going to have to understand that, yes, water can do what it just did. So as we rebuild, we need to, to keep that in mind, for sure. USA Today. Uh, Governor, I think I heard you mention a bill earlier as we were walking by. Um, what can the assembly do and what can you do moving forward to address recovery, economic, and more? Well, the federal government is surging a lot of resources. A lot of private, nonprofit are helping to funnel money for resources. But the more long-term issues of lost money uh, in, in a fall economy by, by merchants here, uh, people who are unemployed, uh, our, our unemployment rates are low. We, ne we need to make sure that people get more unemployment for being out of a job a long period of time. This is an opportunity to help our schools that need significant help and particularly are going to need more infrastructure and what we want to do is to try to fill in the gaps of where all of the other resources might might not fill and i think that you know we've i've talked to representative pless i talked to representative pickett the other day in watauga county i think everybody wants to work together to put something a, a package together we won't they won't be able to do it this early because we've got to assess the damages and, and things are still being found right now. Roads, you have not had a chance. We're trying to fix arteries to go in and save people and to get to people right now. So assessing the damages right now, the financial damages is, is impossible. That will happen. And once that happens, we want to make sure that we're in a coordinated way trying to address all of those needs and do it in a more resilient way. Eric. No, Governor, you touched on the lack of water in some communities. That, that's the critical situation there. Uh, one, are we still talking about weeks before some people will have access to water of any kind? And what resources are being provided at the state and federal level to try to get that reconnected? So first, uh, there were a lot of water systems down across western North Carolina. I think the last number I saw was 53. But there are a lot of water systems, and we know that some potential wells are damaged and many many communities are on boil water advisories so the first thing we're trying to do is to make sure that we get bottled water tanks of, of water into areas so that they can have enough to to live off of right now but the infrastructure of many of these communities was very old to start with and this this flood just decimated it and i think the key is to build it back as quickly as possible but also in a resilient way and there may have to be some temporary workarounds that provide water for a period of time while they build 
the main infrastructure. It's one of the reasons why we called in the Army Corps of Engineers with, with FEMA to bring their engineers to try to help these communities, obviously Asheville being the biggest one. So time, I don't, I don't know the time yet, but I do know that, for example, in Asheville, some things are already coming back on. Administrator, I think you and I were talking about yeah. this a few minutes ago. Yeah, I got a report from uh, my lead that's in the field in Asheville, and uh, they're making progress. They're repairing uh, some of the distribution in the water system, and the words from her is things are actually going better than they expected in the repair. Um, that doesn't give us a time frame still yet, but uh, they're making progress, and that's really encouraging. Yeah, one follow-up, if I yeah, could. Quickly, please. Uh, Governor, I, I know bringing water bottles into central locations, that's been one of those temporary workarounds. What's being done to try to get that water to people who might be still cut off or you know they can no longer leave home it's one of the challenges that we still face because there are a lot of resources in the counties and getting help to the areas that are still inaccessible has been difficult we've done airdrops into some areas but there's some individual homes that are out there that we want to make sure that we get to one thing, one other misinformation has been the military resources. We have activated those military resources and are integrating them into our response here. And one of the things that they will be helping us with is that last mile effort, getting somebody who in one house, in one place, uh, to, to try to help them there. And I'll tell you this, one thing I know about mountain people, a lot of mountain people are proud and a lot of people, mountain people don't want to ask for help. And I, I would ask people and neighbors to try to encourage people to ask for help, to file for FEMA resources, to try to, to, to get as much help as they can, because I'm sure they've never experienced anything like that. Rex? Um, Governor, as noted, the cell phone communications has been a little challenge in this situation here. You've heard from the mayor about that and others, I'm sure. Yeah, are there already discussions at the state level about um, making the cell phone communications in situations like this more sturdy? And, and if so, yeah. what would those things be? How would you do that with some backups or just making it sturdier? Because as the mayor notes, we're now in Hurricane Alley. Well, well first, we're pushing them to get it back on. And that's a an hour by hour push to uh, get deployable resources, to give temporary help and connection to fixing towers and the the multiple agreement they have if that say a Verizon gets up a tower everybody can can use it trying to get the resource out there right now but for both cell phone and electric utility where the grid has been absolutely destroyed in some communities we've got to be more resilient in a permanent way and the challenge is, is that it is more expensive to run lines underground and to make it more resilient in other ways. And Western North Carolina is such a special place. Uh, it, it is not only special for, for many of us with memories of many places that have seen, we've seen them washed away. and that's that's really hard for people who live here. It's hard for people who live all over North Carolina who love Western North Carolina. But we think this investment is important not only for the people here, but for the economy of our state. Because we, we, this is a place that people want to come and want to be. So I will certainly be advocating for long-term investments that are that are more resilient here. And I think there's a group of people who all of us want to work together to do that. Last question, Vicki. Uh, yes, about the Canton Mill, we understood that there was supposed to be a transfer of ownership October 1st, which didn't happen. So what do you hear on that? What do you hear about the wastewater treatment? Is it working? So, and what do you hear about any other thing? So so my team has been working hand in glove with the mayor. Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to let the mayor, because the mayor knows every <laughs> detail about I know a lot of details about this. The mayor knows yeah. every detail well, about this. First that. off, I mean... Vicky, we know from zero hour until right now as it concerns about rebuilding our economy and whoever's going to be occupying that site, Governor Cooper and his team, the Department of Commerce, everyone has our back. Uh, that has been a constant. Uh, the Attorney, uh, Attorney General Stein, his team uh, across the board. What we know right now is that property is still owned by Pact of Evergreen. 
while it is in their ownership, they have responsibilities to the town, they have responsibilities to the state, to the EPA, to DEQ. Uh, our understanding is that uh, wastewater suffered catastrophic damage. Uh, my understanding is that PACTIV is currently working to fix that. It was engulfed with water, but the responsibility to not only treat and run our wastewater, You've been listening to Canton Mayor Zeb Smathers, FEMA Administrator Dean Criswell, and North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper in Canton. Let's now join Spartanburg County leaders speaking about the response to Hurricane Helene in Spartanburg County. Organizations and so many others, we really do appreciate your support and your prayers during this time. One statistic that we haven't been able to share so far in these daily press briefings um, that we'd like to share today is just the overwhelming amount of 911 calls we've received just over the past week. So the week before Hurricane Helene occurred, we had 4,843 911 calls. From September 27th until today, we've had 9,062 911 calls. That means that call volume has more than doubled. We have seen an uptick in some crimes since the hurricane happened, those crimes being property crimes and domestic violence. Again, these 911 calls have increased tremendously. In fact, the first day of the storm, we answered more calls than we normally do in a four-day period. And in just the first hour, we answered the amount of calls we usually answer in a weekend, which was 2,800. Some of the biggest concerns we're hearing, um, and this is, these are concerns we're hearing through our unmet needs urgent line that we are encouraging residents to use, especially after hearing those um, very large 911 call numbers. Um, we've been taking a lot of calls through this unmet needs line over the past several days, easily more than 1,000 calls. And some of the more common concerns are medical related, um, including access to oxygen and insulin. Other folks are running out of food and in some cases are unable to leave their homes to get any food. Spartanburg County, along with the United Way of the Piedmont, are working to address these immediate needs, providing food, water, ice, pet food, toilet paper, feminine products, toiletries, baby needs such as diapers and formula, and other resources um, to residents who've called us for help. County employees and the United Way of the Piedmont have done an excellent job connecting residents to the resources they need, whether that is through the call center or even going door by door. We've had county employees going and knocking on folks' door, making sure they're okay and seeing what they need. We've performed several welfare checks for folks who can't reach their loved ones or elderly neighbors for a variety of reasons, such as lack of transportation or down trees across their driveways. We've received well over 100 calls about storm damage, mainly trees on homes. Some folks have been forced out of their homes altogether due to unsafe living conditions. The good news is our friends with the United Way are offering Airbnb vouchers for those folks who have been displaced, particularly those with children or medical needs or both. If you have been displaced, you could receive a 30-day free credit with Airbnb. Please call again that unmet needs line if you have been displaced. That number is 864-860. 1644. Again, 864-860-1644. To provide more information about the kinds of assistance they're providing, I'm going to call Hannah Jarrett from the United Way of the Piedmont. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I am Hannah Jarrett with United Way. First, I just want to again thank all of our community partners and individuals who have stepped up in the aftermath of Helene. Our work has just begun to recover from this disaster and help local families reach stability and normalcy once again. So we launched our United for All disaster response efforts this past Monday, which includes a relief fund for families most affected by the hurricane in Spartanburg, Cherokee, and Union counties. Since we launched our assistance process on Monday, we've received over 1,200 requests for assistance from people who are impacted by the storm. So our team of staff and volunteers is working very diligently to respond to those requests and connect to community resources as well as financial assistance when eligible. Um, it is taking us a little bit of time to get through all of that, so we appreciate everyone's patience. We are working as quickly as possible to respond to the, to the overwhelming needs of our community. 
If you need assistance because of sto the storm, please visit our website at uwpiedmont.org slash united for all. There you can find a link of a list of up-to-date disaster relief resources and more information about assistance through United Way of the Piedmont. At, as of the end of day yesterday, we had provided over $33,000 in direct financial assistance, helping cover costs related to hurricane impact, such as food, water, and shelter. Um, and this support has been crucial in helping families address their most immediate needs. Um, as Scotty Kay mentioned, one of the most urgent needs that we're seeing is housing for people displaced because of the storm. And we do have a partnership with Airbnb to provide credits for people whose homes are uninhabitable due to storm damage. We can provide credits to stay in an Airbnb for free for up to 30 days for qualifying households. To qualify, you have to show proof of your home being uninhabitable and must be a family with medical conditions. You have to have children in your household or need to be a first responder. You can apply by calling that Spartanburg County Unmet Needs Line at 864-860-1644 or go to the form on the United for All webpage. And again, that's uwpmont.org slash United for All. Um, in addition to the resources and financial relief, um, United Way of the Piedmont has launched a donation and supply drive to gather essentials for those affected. Um, we have both in-person drop-off opportunities and online, online donation options um, to make it as accessible as possible for our community to respond. Those donations will go to local organizations to restock their inventory and collections will begin on Monday, October 7th. And that more information can be found on our webpage. We are also collecting volunteer signups, so if you want to donate your time to relief efforts, please visit that website if you want to help clear debris, if you want to pack and sort donated items, um, or distribute donated items, we would appreciate your, your help. Um, our financial do donations are so important to this, do this effort. With individuals and foundation gifts at this time, we have leveraged over $200,000 to help families in need, and that continues to grow. Um, and we thank everyone for their partnership to help make this disaster response possible. We're here for you if you need us. Good afternoon. Uh, as Scotty Kay echoed earlier, <clears throat> we want to emphasize the importance of our residents calling the unmet, unmet needs phone line in our call center. Um, I'm continually receiving voicemails on my office phone and my cell phone that I'm un unable to uh, answer quickly. Uh, so all those are for unmet, unmet needs for the most part. Um, just had a call, I just checked, we had a lady that was running out of oxygen when her oxygen tank was almost empty. Uh, I may not get those messages for quite some time, so again, we cannot emphasize enough to the public to please call the unmet needs hotline. Uh, we have quite a few operators standing by to take care of all those uh, issues as they come in. The road to recovery is obviously a long one, but we are well underway. We're seeing more and more progress each day and actually each hour. Uh, power outages from Duke Energy, we're right around 50,000 right now, 50,000 customers. I know there's other uh, electric pro providers in the county, but uh, they are reducing their numbers uh, by the hour as well. So we are making, the, uh, making progress. We feel we're turning the corner uh, on the road to recovery. We have uh, closed two of our pods, our points of distribution just because the numbers did not uh, indicate that we needed to continue to support those from the community standpoint. All those resources have been combined into one pod or point of distribution at the Spartanburg, Spartanburg Community College, Tiger River Campus on East Main Street in Duncan. They do have plentiful supplies, but that pod will close once those supplies do run out. We will not be replenishing those supplies as we are seeing the need uh, has, has drastically been reduced. Also, we are closing some of our unused shelters today. As of right now, the numbers we're seeing just don't warrant the uh, significant manpower and resources that it's uh, required to run a, a public shelter. So the public shelters will all be combined into the existing shelter at the Spartanburg Memorial Auditorium. 
and also the special medical needs shelter at USC Upstate Hodge Center will remain open uh, for this time. As, and we're assessing that day by day by the numbers that of, of folks that are taking advantage of those two resources. We do have five meal distribution sites for those looking for meals. Dorman High School, Cowpens Elementary School, USC Upstate Hodge Center, Spartanburg Memorial Auditorium, and Landrum Baptist Church. Hot showers are also available at First Baptist Church in Lyman from 8, from 11 a.m. until, from, I'm sorry, from 11, 8, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. and 7, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Sorry about that. Again, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. and then again from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Now we'll get an update from Spartanburg Water. Hi, I'm Jennifer Candler with Spartanburg Water. Um, we want to share some good news with you. Um, all of our ice houses except one are back online and providing ice, including those in Packlet and Woodruff. Um, we do understand the continued need for water for those who still are without power and rely on wells. So all of our ice houses except the location in Boiling Springs have the ability to vend water. So uh, beginning today, October 4th, water is free indefinitely at uh, those ice houses that vend water for community members. So we have a location in Cowpens, we have a location in Packlet, and, um, and Woodruff. Uh, 12 total, 11 online right now. Um, we want to really uh, thank Duke Energy, um, all of our electrical utility partners in the county, and certainly the huge numbers of linemen and utility workers who have been working around the clock to bring power back to our treatment plants and facilities that have been operating with generator power. We've um, had several more facilities brought back online in um, just the last day. Um, and lastly, we just want to continue to thank our Spartanburg Water family. Um, they have been working diligently to make sure our community has reliable drinking water and wastewater services and will continue to do so um, moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. I want to move on to uh, debris removal. We're still receiving a good many calls from the general public asking about the process for debris removal along county roads. As we have uh, noted uh, several times, please bring your storm-related debris, woody debris, vegetative debris, trees, and branches, limbs to the side of the road. Do not put them in bags. And also, more importantly, do not put them in the roadway. We've just spent many, many days clearing the roadway, and we're already seeing people piling the debris in the lanes of traffic so our public works have to go back out, push it back off the road. Uh, please keep it to the side of the road, the edge of the pavement or the fog line as it's called. Uh, that in the uh, right of way, ditch, part of your yard, whatever case, the case may be. Keep it away from mailboxes so that the mail carriers can begin mail service again and also any existing trees, shrubbery, things like that so that the equipment can easily pick this debris up. But once again, please do not let that debris extend out into the lanes of traffic that we have uh, worked so diligently to open up for the public. Reminder that the uh, state South Carolina State Forestry Commission uh, issued a statewide burning ban for all unincorporated areas of the state. That includes Spartanburg County. Uh, we are seeing open burning uh, occurring and we are getting complaints to our sheriff's office and also our fire departments. Uh, we did have a, uh, a uh, location of a fire, fire department in Spartanburg County where someone was burning uh, storm related debris and it ended up causing a residential structure fire. Uh, fortunately they were able to extinguish the fire as there was no water supply available in that area and had it gotten out of control could have been a very bad situation but again please refrain from burning any uh, storm related debris until further notice. That's the whole purpose of having the uh, free pickup on the county roads. Uh, so there's really no reason to burn it, just pile it up on the side of the road and probably tomorrow or if the latest Monday, crews will start coming around and collecting that, picking it up. And again, as we said, it doesn't matter where you live, any county property, any county road, you will have this opportunity to have the debris removed for free and it will take as long as it takes, as many months as it takes to get around to every road, we'll go through as many times as we need to each area. 
Reminder, you can take your household trash to the county landfill in Woodruff, I'm sorry, in Welford, it is open. We also have multiple recycling centers back online accepting your household waste. One of the new centers that opened today is Station 4, which is Barry's Pond on Tuckapaw Road in Duncan. And we hope to have uh, two more sites open tomorrow as power is restored. Now I'll let Scotty Kay talk about the hiring, ongoing hiring event. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. As we mentioned yesterday, we had an overwhelming response. Folks interested in helping us remove the storm debris across our county. And again, we are so grateful for that support. Um, in fact, we extended the hiring event into today and it will last until 4 p.m. at the Spartanburg County Administration Building. That address is 366 North Church Street in Spartanburg. So far, we have hired 250 at least. 250 people have been hired, but we are looking to hire more. So if you're looking for a great way to help out the community during this time and get paid, this is a great chance to do that. Um, folks who are hired can earn more than $1,000 a week and training is provided. The primary job duties of a data collection or debris monitor include ensuring that only eligible debris is removed, loaded, and hauled, ensuring that the debris loads are properly contained in the loading containers, and monitoring the contractors and reporting any potential issues. The minimum qualifications for this position include that you must be 18 years of age, you must have a personal vehicle, insurance, and a cell phone, um, and you must have the ability to work in the outside elements for long periods of time. Now we want to touch on some disaster unemployment assistance. Individuals living or working in Spartanburg County have been identified by FEMA as being potentially eligible to receive disaster unemployment assistance or DUA for the period of September 29, 2024 through April 5, 2025. The DUA program provides funds to assist people who become unemployed as a direct result of Hurricane Helene. DUA is also available to small business owners and the self-employed, including 1099 contract workers who've lost personal income due to the disaster. If you lost work or were unemployed as a direct result of Hurricane Helene, you can visit dew.sc.gov and click the My Benefits login in the first circle of the homepage to apply through the Unemployment Insurance Benefits System. For help, please call 1-866-831-1724. Again, 866-831-1724. The deadline to apply for DUA benefits is Monday, December 2nd, 2024. Workers or business owners who meet certain criteria may be eligible to receive a minimum of $150 up to a maximum of $326 per week in DUA benefits. Now, our friends with SC Works Spartanburg, they are open today to assist folks with unemployment claims. Their address is 110 Commerce Street in downtown Spartanburg, and they just ask that you park in the Dunbar parking garage across the street. As far as FEMA assistance goes, just a reminder that individuals in Spartanburg County who sustain losses can begin applying uh, for FEMA assistance by registering online at www.disasterassistance.gov. They can call 1-800-621-3362 or they can use the FEMA app. Uh, we've gotten a few questions about paying property taxes. Um, some Spartanburg County residents have reached out and were con concerned that they wouldn't be able to pay their taxes on time. I'm here to let you know that the South Carolina Department of Revenue is granting an extension until October 31st of 2024 for property taxes that were due by September 30th of 2024. There are several options for paying your taxes in Spartanburg County. You can come in person at our administration building. You can go through our drive-through. You can use our Dropbox, or you can pay online at SpartanburgCounty.org. Due to Helene, Spartanburg County residents now have more time to register to vote. The new voter registration deadline is October 14th. Also, uh, we've been getting several calls from veterans and we're happy to report that we are connecting those veterans with our Veterans Affairs Office. Um, so please keep calling that urgent unmet needs line, a veteran or not a veteran, uh, that is the best way to get in contact with those important county resources. And with that, I'll open it up to any questions. 
All right. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you. I'm done. I'm taking myself off the case. I didn't realize that I had 8 to 11 a.m. today. Uh, an update on this Friday afternoon, one week after Hurricane Helene hit the upstate. Leaders there from South uh, Spartanburg County giving us an update this afternoon. Uh, we have learned that the United Way of the Piedmont is offering Airbnb vouchers for people in Spartanburg County who have been displaced, particularly for families and also first responders. Leaders there in Spartanburg County are encouraging people to call the urgent unmet needs number. That number is 864 601644. You can learn more about those Airbnb vouchers by calling that number. We put it right here on your screen. And officials say this number is also for people who cannot get out of their yards and can't get their critical medication. This number was established earlier this week to help reduce the number of people calling 911. Officials say the call volume to 911 has more than doubled in the past week. And sadly, they share that there has also been an uptick in property crimes and domestic violence violence in Spartanburg County. An update on power outages. Officials said there are 50,000 Duke Energy customers still without power in Spartanburg County, but officials say that number is going down. And they say enough progress is being made that the shelters are being combined into one general population shelter. That's at the Spartanburg Memorial Auditorium where people can find food, water, a place to sleep for the night, and also a place to plug in their electronics. The special needs medical shelter on the campus of USC the upstate will remain opened. Uh, officials also shared that Lyman First Baptist Church continues to offer hot showers for people who need one. And Spartanburg Water says there are multiple locations where people can get ice and also water. One more important note, uh, officials in Spartanburg County saying that they've received a lot of phone calls asking about debris removal. This is happening, of course, in many counties around our areas. People are continuing to clean up their yards and collect all of that debris. They want to know where to put it. Officials in Spartanburg County are asking that you place your debris on the curb next to the road, not in the road, they ask, and not near any mailboxes. Again, officials really emphasizing, please don't put debris in the road. They say debris collection should begin tomorrow or Monday at the latest, and it is free. And officials in Spartanburg County ask that you do not burn your debris. They also say the hiring event continues today for debris monitoring positions in Spartanburg County. That's happening today until 4 p.m., so still a few hours for people who are interested. It's happening at the Spartanburg County Administration Building on North Church Street. Officials say you do have have to be 18 years old, have a valid driver's license, a personal vehicle, and a cell phone, and the ability to work outside. You may be working long shifts. Officials say people can earn as much as $1,000 a week for this job. Again, this hiring event is happening at the Spartanburg County Administration Building on North Church Street. We will, of course, continue to monitor any updates from other counties around our area and state officials throughout the day. And if you would like to help, this reminder for you, you can scan this QR code to donate to the American Red Cross. That financial support is so, so important. Thank you for being with us. We will now send you back to regular programming.